Paul Macrina, thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the podcast today. How are you doing, man? I know you're back up in Massachusetts right now, uh, spending some time with your family. How are things for you right now? Yeah, man, everything's good. Thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to start this. Uh, can't complain, you know, with being totally remote right now. I figured I'd go home and see some family, and life's pretty good. Everyone's happy. Everyone's healthy. So you started a podcast recently. That's why we have you on this podcast to talk about that briefly. It's about mental health. Um, before we dive into that, though, I kind of want to you know, give the viewers some of your general background. So uh, let's just touch on growing up, where you're from, hometown, your experiences with ath athletics coming up, and how you ended up coming to Drexel. Yeah, so um, I'm going to my fourth year at Drexel. I'm in the five-year program. Uh, I'm from a small town called Brentham in Massachusetts. Uh, 10,000 people grew, uh, grew up to King Phillip Regional High School, played football across there. Um, and in terms of how I got to Drexel, you know, I love the school. I had a great conversation with Coach Collins, who at that point was the defensive coordinator at Drexel. Um, went to a couple prospect days here and there, and then found myself, you know, falling in love and um, ended up committing there summer going into my senior year. So you come to Drexel and, uh, you know, obviously playing lacrosse. One of the things you talk about on the podcast on your first episode, it's called Survive Your Mind, by the way. I just want to plug that real quick. And we'll plug it at the end so people know how to, you know, how to enjoy those podcasts. But um, you talk about playing time, right? And the difficulties of being a student athlete coming up, being used to being the guy in your high school, and then coming to a Division One university where it's so competitive. You know, you're not the only guy who has skill at your position. So let's talk a little bit about that experience for you, what the experience as a student athlete has been like at Drexel, some of the challenges that have been put in front of you, and then maybe some of the resources that have been helpful for you in your time as a Dragon. Yeah, I think growing up, uh, we heard it a lot as athletes, but, you know, for me, it was lacrosse isn't going to get you there. You know, the academics have to be a huge part of that. Uh, it took me too long in high school to realize that. You know, I'm happy that I had – a final push at the end of my sophomore throughout my junior year of really working hard in the classroom. Uh, but Drexel is a great academic school. And naturally, it's hard in the classroom, right? You have to put in that extra work. Uh, for me, it doesn't come naturally. So it was something that was a total adjustment for me. And then playing time as well, you know, I had great goaltenders under me in high school. We all worked really hard. We pushed each other. You know, I ended up being the starter there. Um, when I got to college, I wanted to be that guy. You know, I, I worked my butt off all the time. And I'm not saying that college changed that, but I'm going to say that uh, the competition was a lot better around me and the players I was playing against were a lot better too. So practice wasn't as easy. Um, you know, scrimmages weren't as easy. The locker room was, you know, less fun. It was more get your head right and get ready to practice. So you, you talk about getting your mental health together, um, you know, with everything going on in school uh, and, and the team situation for you, you know, not, not being used to the lack of playing time you're getting. Talk to me a little bit about uh, what specifically you mean, you know, about mental health, right? What, like what were some of the things that are bothering you or what, what are some of the conversations you had with people, uh, with the support staff at Drexel that, that really gave you some insight into what you personally needed to change to derive some more satisfaction from your experience? Yeah, I think I was one of those guys, you know, in, in terms of like personality that I always like to be there for people. Like I'm a huge family person, you know. Um, I'd love people to call me if they need something, that sort of thing. And I think I spent a lot of time at Drexel getting to know people and learning about people. And it's a totally new situation for me too. And I didn't take the time to maybe fully adjust and be present at Drexel. You know, there are things like that. So I more struggled with, I was in a totally new environment going through something I'd never gone through before on top of uh, a new school system where the classroom is harder and the homework's harder. Um, I think I never took the chance to really give myself time to, uh, to process where I was and in turn, I think that affected my mental health because everything just piled up. And if you let things pile up, you know, it has to crumble at some point or it has to break. And not that it was at my breaking point, you know, not, not that I, I didn't get the help I needed, um, but the Drexel support staff with Madeline and the nutritionist and, and all the great people in the athletic department, they were able to kind of like sit you down and give you a new perspective, right? Um, I know Mr. Gannon was great with me in terms of, he was a college athlete and he was kind of like, Hey man, here's what I did. This is what you got to do. And sure enough, that helped me out. So you mentioned, you, you referenced a couple people there, right? Can, can you allude to a couple maybe specific conversations? I, I know you, you said you didn't have a breaking point, but you were at a low point. So uh, let me in on a little, a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes and what kind of led to these conversations and what was discussed when you, when you went and got, tried to get some help. Yeah, I think Madeline's been the most influential person to me. 
Um, not that my conversations with other people haven't been informative and helpful, but where Madeline uh, is very passionate in this and has done a lot of great research and a lot of work in it, she was able to give me not only her insight as a swimmer in college, but as a sports psychologist. And so I remember we did a conversation talking about, you know, the biggest challenge or obstacle you faced in your life. So for me, when I talked about my family and, and my parents' divorce, you know, I think saying that out loud and not just to my family and friends, but to my, you know, my new brothers in the lacrosse team and with her, it was kind of like a step back, like, all right, this is, this is real. You know, this is a problem that they looked at it as a problem, I guess, you know, it wasn't someone I grew up with where they know what's happening. This is something new for everyone. And when she was able to like, I'm not going to use the word diagnose, but I think, um, I think dive into what I was saying and how it's affected me she's been able to kind of give me more, more background and activities and exercises to relieve stress and, and be more present where I am. Well, and I think that I speak for all, all of our viewers and anyone listening or watching and saying that, you know, we appreciate the vulnerability and, and the ability, Paul, to open up about, um, you know, intimate details of this. And you do that on your first episode of the podcast as well of Survive Your Mind. So um, when, we, when we talk about the podcast and we transition over to that, right, what inspired you to start this podcast? Why did you feel the need to start something to create a platform for student athletes at Drexel to talk about these issues? Yeah, I think that first of all, it had to be done. Uh, you know, I'm flat out going to be, this is something that need to needs to be more present in our everyday lives. It needs to be talked about more. And I feel as though that, where my personality is already more about making connections with people. I felt as though I had a good platform of, you know, supposed to be this D1 athlete who's got all their stuff together, you know, in the classroom, in the weight room, on the field. And in reality, like you could have everything going for you and still like not be okay. Right. And still have a lot going on behind the scenes, uh, especially with COVID where I wasn't with my teammates, you know, those guys are my glue, they're my rocks and they didn't have me, you know, we didn't have each other and you're pent up in the house all day. And so there were a lot of reasons for people to start to uh, feel down on themselves, I think, especially when, when COVID hit in quarantine. And I felt as though that there's no better time than present. And so I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And in reality, like the longer I waited to start, the longer my message was going to remain, you know, in my head versus in the public. So I felt as though I need to start this now. And Hopefully, as we're, we're starting to you know, get our way through COVID and starting to get back to reality, that we can all sort of um, get back to a place of, of mental happiness. Well, and, and you, in your first episode of, of the podcast, it's you talking about you know, your inspiration for why you, know, you started the show and then your own personal, I don't want to say trials, right, but your own experiences and, and what you're trying to get through. Um, so we'll break it down into those two sections. You talk one about um, your experience as a student athlete and how it didn't mirror your expectations coming in. And then the other one is more of a family situation. So let's go one at a time there. Uh, and what, let me in on why each of those you thought was important to mention in the first episode. Yeah. So for me, my life since I was like six or seven years old has been my family on the cross, you know, uh, school, very important. I'm going to be I'll write honest with everyone. Like I didn't take it as seriously growing up, you know, naturally when I got to high school, it became very more real. Um, but in terms of where I got most of my, my emotions from where I got most of my love from my family members, you know, my best friends that all came from sports and it came from my home life. And so when those two things as major as they are in my life were altered and affected, you know, it drastically changed who I was. Um, so, in terms of lacrosse, we'll start with that one because I bring it up first. You know, I'm an easygoing guy, and during practice, I play better when I'm like relaxed and take a deep breath. Uh, but when I got to college, I couldn't do that. You know, nothing was given, nothing was set in stone, right? Each week, each play, each shot is a new competition. You know, everyone's watching. And I think that was a, a big change for me, you know, and I have to have, and I've been working on it and trying to find that that balance of keep your composure, but know like everyone, like everything matters. Every play matters, every clear matters. Um, so in terms of lacrosse, that was my biggest change, I think. And then you mentioned that change, right? So 
what has helped you in making that transition, you know, for that mindset to, to come to terms with, you know, accepting uh, the, the successes and failures as they come, right? What, for you, what, what has, what, what exercises or what things do you do maybe on a daily or weekly basis to make sure you're checking in with, with your head and, and you have a clear mindset going forward? Yeah, I started every morning when I wake up, whether it's one minute or it's 15 minutes, I'm just present where I am. So Natalie and I talked about it. it's called grounding. It's sitting up, you know, whether it's on the couch or on your bed, putting your feet on the floor, you know, putting your phone away and just being present of where you are. You know, I say to in the podcast, I'm like, life is not given, you know, it can be taken away from you tomorrow, just like that. And I started to really appreciate where I was. And I think I was kind of playing like the woe is me card a little bit. You know, like I should be given more opportunities when in reality, like I got to work for those, you know, like nothing's given. And I think that overall, like the switch in my head when I started doing this was that, you know, I'm in an amazing place compared to where a lot of people are on this world. You know, I'm very gifted. I'm very um, lucky to be where I am doing what I love. And that's being in the cross or excuse me, being with my family, being with my friends and playing the cross. So that has totally helped me that little, um, that little realization. It's so funny, man. Cause I, I know in my years when I, when I was an undergrad at Drexel, I, I had my personal experiences and, um, you know, messed around with meditation, which has proven to be very helpful present moment, uh, mindfulness and awareness. So helpful. And there's a book I read. It's a short book. A friend of mine gave it to me. It's called, uh, the precious present a book about living in the now because the now is the only thing we've got. It's all that there's ever been and all there's ever will be. There's no future. There's no past. All that there is, is now. And I think that, you know, even Michael Jordan, if you watch The Last Dance, the full documentary, towards the end, he talks about uh, when he hits that shot against Utah in game six to win his last series, he talks about how he, he was re- he's channeling his inner zen and being present in that moment, in the now. And, and it's something that we've, you hear, uh, and, and I think it's getting bigger now in the last couple of years as social media has popped up and there's all these movements yeah. for mental health awareness. But it's so important to ground yourself, to your point, or to have a mechanism to really find yourself in the present moment. Yeah, I agree. Moving, moving ahead uh, or kind of sticking with that podcast, but moving, uh, transitioning to the other topic you brought up, you know, you brought up your relationship with your, your mom and dad. And you, you know, I, I again, appreciate your vulnerability on this. And if I could get your, your thoughts on this real quick, you talk about their divorce and how that kind of, you know, set up expectations for you at a young age when you didn't realize you're blaming yourself for, why they split up and this whole time, that's just a, a lie that's lived in your head that you thought was a reality for so long. So take me through that, you know, kind of being a child, not being aware that that's not the truth and then coming to the realization that I'm holding this weight against myself for no reason. Yeah, I talk about um, in life, we tend to want to find answers, whether it's the first thing that pops up, I think it gives us a sense of clarity and reassurance. So if you can't comprehend something, you find an answer the easiest way possible. So for me, when I was seven and they, and they got divorced, I had no idea what was happening, right? Like I couldn't comprehend that situation yet. Um, All I knew is that they weren't living in the same house anymore. And so little me was looking for an answer as to why it happened. And naturally I feel those people, we tend to have a, a certain sense of blame already. You know, I think accountability is something that every person has. And in terms of how often they are accountable or not, you know, I find that I, I want to be more accountable than not. So I started that, that process when I was younger, um, transitioning to, as I got older and I started to comprehend what was going on. Um, I realized that clearly, you know, it wasn't my fault, right? I was, I was a little kid. I had nothing to do with it. Um, but I think that whole concept of trying to find an answer has driven me to, to being here now because now I know that the quick and easy answer can, can be totally wrong because mine was. So now I I view situations and I view um, problems in a much deeper sense because I know my initial gut feeling could be totally wrong. And if I don't do more research or know everything that's happening, then, you know, I could, I could be in a very bad place, which I was. So I'd rather be, I'd rather be totally confident and know what's happening versus just take the easy way out and be like, Oh, this is why. Well, I give you major props for, you know, bringing that up, not just with us, but also on your podcast and and touching on some stuff, which I know for you is probably 
at a point in time, things that made you uncomfortable to talk about. Mm -hmm. And on that note, uh, I'm sure there's people listening to this or watching this right now uh, who, who have similar feelings and have never really had the chance to express them. Uh, you know, other, you know, I, and you mentioned it too, you're not the only person whose family has someone who goes through a divorce. You're not the only person who has problems. So mm -hmm. with that in mind, what you do have is a platform and you are encouraging people to be more open. So what would you say to people, maybe not just student athletes at Drexel, but student athletes as a whole, people in our society as a whole, when it comes to dealing with these issues of mental health, what advice would you give them knowing what you know from your, now from your experiences at Drexel? Yeah, I think my biggest thing is life is hard and it's not fair and it's unforgiving. Um, with that, I also think that we see people in a certain light as me, maybe if you're a kid watching Division One athlete, you know, you might think as a young child that, you know, my life's fantastic, right? You know, I, I've done it all right. You know, I got to my dream and, and that's great if you're a little kid. But as you start to grow up, you realize that life sucks sometimes and you're not the only one that's going through it. So my message to everyone is don't be afraid to conquer what's inside of you. And I did that. And it's allowed other people to do that too. You know, I've had a lot of great conversations with people recently saying, you know, first of all, thank you for, for being open and vulnerable, like you've said, but it's allowed me to reflect. And so you, you can, and you will conquer whatever is inside of you and talking about it, whether it's to me on the podcast, whether it's to Chris, whether it's not on any sort of social media, just a conversation if you put those words out into this earth and you make them real, then you now have control over that situation. It's not holding you back anymore. And when I started talking on the podcast, like I'm happy right now, you know, and I'm not saying I wasn't happy, but now that I've talked about it and I've seen, you know, that first video got 3000 people looking at it. Like that's real. Now it's not my problem anymore. It's everyone like, okay, this is what's happening in his life. And I just, it's a weight lifted off your shoulders and, and I'm happy right now. Well, I, just seeing the, the look on your face, I'm excited for you, man. This is, this is great stuff. And, and, and with that in mind, can you, can you put into words kind of that feeling of, of letting go, right? What, what that feels like. And then, you know, maybe experiencing it when you have these vulnerable conversations, right? Like the emotions of going through these tough talks, but then uh, the feelings of, uh, you know, maybe having these pent up emotions let go. Yeah, I think my, now having the emotion and going through it is different than talking about it. You know, it's one of those things where I can't really express what it feels like. It, it's a process. And I think waking up every day for some people is really hard, you know, whatever, whatever situation they're in, whatever their, what their present life is like is really difficult. And I was kind of at that place too. You know, I, it was like, Oh, you no motivation to do this, no motivation to do that. Then I woke up kind of a couple of days after and it was like, I got right up. You know what I mean? I was ready. I was like, whether I was going downstairs to make coffee, whether I was like going to class, you know, I woke up with like a new sense of purpose in life. You know, I, I found, and I will always think lacrosse is my calling, you know, but God, if this is something that helps people, then like I got a new, I got a new outlook on life right now. And if people are, are taking that message that I presented and, and running with it, you know, then, then that's a victory for me. So I think that in terms of the emotion it gives me, it is just a, a breath of fresh air, you know, and, and that's in the most simplest form. And I think a lot of people are starting to also experience that as they talk to me and, and conquer whatever inside of them. Well, you mentioned, you know, it's a breath of fresh air and you're starting to have these conversations. So just real quick before we, we wrap up and you don't have to give me crazy, you know, major details, but what's kind of the plan now as you look to grow this platform, you grow this podcast and what are your expectations and who are some of the, kind, the kinds of people you want to bring on in the future? Like I said, with being an athlete in terms of a kid's point of view, you know, we see the, these people in you know, like country music stars and athletes professional wise and things like that. You know, we put these people on such a pedestal that we all want to be that. And I think that those people probably have it worse than most because either the struggle it took to get there, but also, you know, there's millions and millions of people watching them every single day. Like the fact that they have to be almost perfect in their everyday lives to not be scrutinized. You know, it's gotta be a huge mental weight on them. And so 
if everyone can can see that we're all human and that the you know life doesn't just pick and choose us you know at the bottom that people on the top are feeling it too you know that's where i want to go with this i want everyone to feel a little more human and i want everyone to kind of be a little more connected on this earth well paul listen man i think this is this is great stuff it's great content and it's got a good good purpose behind it. And I, I couldn't be happier for you and, and more proud person to person, friend to friend uh, of a venture that you're taking on. And this is really something special and I appreciate you doing this. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, the support has been, has been tremendous for me. Um, you know, I never thought it would take off like it did. Like I said, in one of my podcasts, I was like, or I think I did it on live with my friend. I was like, if it is just remains my Drexel family and my home family, and we learn a little bit more about each other and grow, um, I'm a happy guy, um, but the support from everyone has been has been overwhelmingly good. Um, and so thank you for having me on and I appreciate you supporting me and, and giving me all these words of advice. Yeah, well, one more thing before we go, uh, we'll plug it. How, how could people uh, view your podcast? What's the best way that they, they could uh, take a listen to it? Yeah, so right now I'm on Instagram at survive your mind. It's survive period your period mind. Uh, but I've also started a SoundCloud, YouTube, and I'm working on getting on Spotify too. So if you go on my Instagram, you'll find a link to my website. Uh, my friends, they're, they're called The Platform. They have created me a fantastic website, really easy to navigate, um, very visually pleasing. You know, they've done a great job for me. So I have a website too. Uh, so I think the Instagram is the best place to start and you'll see um, links to my videos and things like that. Survive your mind, man. Big stuff coming up for you and that, that platform in the future. Thanks again, Paul, for taking the time for this. Thanks. Have a great day.